So how is it different from what is popular today? Like let's take Airflow as, as AWS SageMaker pipelines. Uh, where does it fit? We're building on top of Hamilton, which is uh, an open source framework for describing data flows. Uh, uh, in terms of uh, where Hamilton and kind of where we're starting is with replacing, is, is helping you model the micro. So uh, Airflow, for example, is a macro orchestration framework. You essentially divide things up into large tasks and chunks. Uh, but the, you know, the software engineering that goes within that task, right, is the thing that you're generally going to be updating and adding to over time as your machine learning, you know, grows within your company or you have new data sources, uh, uh, you, you want to create new models, right? Um, and so what we're really uh, uh, targeting first is helping you uh, replace that procedural Python code with Hamilton code that you describe, uh, which I can you know, go into details a little bit more. Um, and so uh, the idea is, you know, we want to help you enable a, you know, a junior a team of data scientists to not trip up over the software engineering aspects of maintaining the code within the macro uh, tasks of, of something such as Airflow. Um, so right now, people uh, Hamilton is very lightweight. People use uh, Hamilton within the task within an Airflow task. They use us within you know Fast API, uh, Flask apps. Uh, they can use us within a notebook. Um, and so Hamilton is really trying to help with the kind of uh, you know you could almost think of it as DBT for Python functions. So it gives a very opinionated way of writing Python. So at a high level, it's the it's the layer above, and then we're trying to you know build out features of the platform and the open source to be able to you know take that. Uh, you know, Hamilton uh, data flow definition and help you say auto generate the airflow tasks. Uh, since, you know, to a data, junior data scientist, whether using uh, airflow, prefect, Dexter, right, it shouldn't really, uh, uh, th th that's just an implementation detail that doesn't help you, uh, you know, make better models. It's really just a, a, something that help, uh, uh, it's the, the vehicle for which you, you know, use to kind of uh, run your uh, pipelines with. And you said procedural Python code. So, if I understood it correctly, like it is kind of duck inside the duck. So the duck above is let's, let's say this, what you call macro duck that would be managed by, let's say airflow, but you're, you're referring like Hamilton framework and, and your startup is focusing on more on this job. So duck inside the duck. Why do we need duck inside the duck? Yeah, I mean, so, yeah, because uh, so uh, when you're iterating on, on models, right, you're adding a new feature, right? Uh, you're not going to create a new, because uh, yeah, uh, a new feature roughly corresponds to a new column, uh, right? Uh, you're not going to add a new airflow task just to compute a single feature, unless it's some sort of big, massive uh, feature, right, that requires a lot of memory, right? And so in which case, uh, you know, the, the, the iteration that you're going to be doing uh, is going to be within those tasks. Uh, uh, if you add something new, so... Uh, uh, in terms of the backstory of like how we actually came up with Hamilton, um, so uh, at Stitch Fix, data scientists were uh, which where Hamilton was created. So my prior company that I worked at, um, uh, data scientists were responsible for end to end, uh, you know, going from prototype production and then being on call for what they uh, took to production. Uh, the team was essentially uh, doing time series forecasting, where uh, every month uh, or every couple of weeks they had to update their model to help you know produce forecasts for the business. Uh, uh, so, you know, the, the, the macro workflow wasn't changing. They were just changing what was within, you know, the, the kind of the task steps, right? Uh, but, you know, they had, the team uh, was, was a really old team. They had a lot of code, a lot of you know, legacy code. Uh, they had, you know, in terms of uh, creating you know, features, they were creating on the, on the order of a thousand features. Because in, in time series forecasting, it's very easy to kind of, uh, you know, uh, add features every month. Say there was a marketing spend or, you, or if you're trying to model or simulate something, okay, there's going to be marketing spend next month. How can we simulate, you know, demand type thing, right? Um, so they're always continually adding and updating to the code, but the the problem was, you know, the uh, it wasn't engineered in, in in a good way, and so in which case it was like super slow uh, to add new things. Uh, they didn't have confidence uh, when they added or changed something that uh, something didn't break, right? So, uh, uh, you know, hence, hence the uh, the need to rather than having to have a senior software engineer on each pull request to tell them, hey, decouple things, hey, don't. Uh, that's you know, you're going to have issues with the, with the way that you're writing. We came up with Hamilton, which is a paradigm. Uh, where essentially you describe everything as functions, um, where the function name corresponds exactly to an output. 
because one of the issues was uh, given 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 a feature, you didn't know where to where to go in the code base to fix it or to understand it or even know how where it was created. And so the idea was, okay, given a feature, can we map it to exactly one function? Uh, make the function name correspond to that output, and then the function that put arguments declare declarative declare. Uh, uh, what's required to compute it. So then when you come to read the code, it's very clear what the output is and what the inputs are. You have the function doc string because with procedural code, generally in script form, there is no place to stick documentation naturally. Oh, you, uh, can, you can put it above the line, right? Uh, but, like, uh, it's not, um, uh, you, you start staring at a wall of text. It's easier to, you know, from a, uh, a, a, a grokking perspective in terms of just, you know, reading functions, right? If you really want to understand the flow of things, right? It's, you're not overwhelmed. Uh, you have the doc string uh, for extra function uh, for documentation, and then, uh, but then also everything's unit testable by default. So they didn't have a very good testing story, right? Um, and so, uh, and then in terms of uh, in terms of distinction between you know other frameworks with Hamilton, uh, the naming of the functions and the input arguments stitches together a DAG or a, a graph of like dependencies. So you do some magic on top of Python, right, to figure it out. How about working with it? Uh, does IDE support it? Uh, so IDEs, uh, no. So we that's on the roadmap to like provide more plugins. Uh, uh, but essentially, uh, yeah, rather than having to annotate a function with a step and then manually specify the workflow from the steps, we short circuit that with everything uh, through the aspect of naming. Um, so long-winded way to say, uh, uh, you know, we started at the micro because that was really you know what was slowing the team down. Uh, by transitioning to Hamilton, they were four times more efficient on that monthly, uh, uh, you know, task. Uh, just because it was a very prescribed and simple way to, like, if I want to add or update something, it's very clear and easy to to know where to add it in the code base, what to review, know, understand the impacts, and then therefore how to integrate it with uh, uh, the rest of the uh, the workflow.